and welcome to episode 43 of Enterprise Tech India Unplugged. And uh, we hope you are subscribing to our channel on YouTube and subscribing to our podcast. The best way to listen to us is in the audio format. As you can see, uh, we don't focus too much on video, but uh, if you like YouTube, you can see, the, see us there. And uh, to begin with, we have uh, with us Kumaran, who runs a very interesting podcast called uh, Saturday Architecture. And uh, we just concluded an episode recording of that before this session. And uh, we encourage you all of you to listen to those discussions on the customer experience. We have Raja, who is a technologist. He wears multiple hats as a uh, as a startup person, as an enterprise person, and uh, uh, working in uh, multiple industries in, in the in the IT field. And we have uh, Venkat, who is uh, the head of technology at Aqua Connect. Uh, Nishant, who is uh, an architect uh, with uh, IBS software. So. With this panel, what we want to do is discuss what is happening with the hiring in the IT space, right? So right from the startups to the enterprise, how it is impacting. Exactly, maybe a year and a half ago, we were discussing layoffs and uh, we were discussing how uh, the pandemic is impacting a lot of people. And even before the pandemic, actually, there were, there were a lot of downturns in the economy and uh, we, we had uh, layoffs in large industries like Cognizant and other layoffs were happening at that point of time. Uh, now we are looking at the same companies are hiring in bulk. They are, uh, Cognizant is going to hire so many people now, right? And TCS is going to hire so many people now. Infosys is going to hire pressures, right? And, and the focus seems to be on pressures, right? So what I want to have a discussion with this panel is, what is, if you are going to hire today, what are your concerns and what do you want to be hiring for, right? So Kumaran, I, I know you have a view on the startups, right? So look at, not just looking at the startups, but looking, looking at from what, if you were to hire today, or if you were to go and look at the industry from a neutral perspective, what do you think is happening with hiring? Today? Uh, I think it's, it's, I think it's, it's kind of two, uh, two things, one uh, pointing at the same thing, right? Today, the industry is being very reactive and that's creating, uh, that will create long-term problems, right? I have huge demand, let's go get people. Like, I need this technology, I want that done, right? And that kind of upsets things and it makes a very unhealthy environment in the long run. Right? So, uh, what I kind of do to handle that is typically I need something now, right? Uh, that situation needs to be avoided. Okay. And uh, so that means that uh, whoever is leading the technology, right? Whether it's an architect, or CTO or whoever, kind of you have a trend of the industry. It's not that it just changes overnight. The only exception to that role is you suddenly you have a services kind of a company where they got a suddenly a big project with thousand members right so that's that's an exception right you suddenly you signed a deal with thousand people and then you got that so that's one part of it okay but there is another major area where there is no sudden demand that is coming in so for that I, I'll just talk for how I have done it I don't say that, you know what, I got a new need, I'm going to recruit it. I kind of look at it differently. I have a vision of my business. I know it's going to grow this much or this is what I want to grow. Okay. I have a sense that how much of backup do I have? In architecture, I do backup and recovery in BCP, right? Back, how the, uh, when do I do a backup? If it goes down, how do I do a recovery? So similarly, I think skills also needs to have a BCP and a DR in place. So what I kind of do is basically have an approach in which I kind of anticipate it and start working with different people. And, and I would have, so I would have somebody who I can, and if let's say I find a, a person very interesting, right? I keep on looking out for people. And when I come across people, 
i will kind of outsource work to them okay let let so that they can do it in part time so you are on mute deepak it is it's like a gig which you will offer it's to like a gig yeah and the thing is i pick up things which are not which is in the not critical part but it is important to me i because if i pick something not important i won't look at it it should be important but not urgent those kind of stuff i pick it and give it to these people okay and i kind of work that second is i just keep talking around and says is there somebody interested in moving or making a change or somebody like that so if i get somebody like that i do the same thing but it will be non monetary i'll say you know why don't you try this and show it to me kind of a uh, scenario and in a worst case scenario if i kind of hit that like probably once in 6 years i've had that where i needed to take somebody urgently okay in that case i explicitly asked that person right i gave him a problem i said how many time do you need to solve it he said 2 weeks i said okay fine we will do our interview after 2 weeks this is the problem implement it and we will talk after 2 weeks then that person come he finishes the demo i have a question around what he has done it is never about what could be done or whether they are good or like that right how is he so basically i look for how is he how did he handle the problem what are the weaknesses how is he handling it i look for that and that is i am telling the last line of defense ideally we don't need to know that you've already done something and the history speaks for itself i'll just say can you come join my team this is what i can offer you to pay okay and the other thing along this itself you would have realized is hiring need what is hiring you need somebody to crank your engine drum there are some companies who can't they need to have them on their payroll and stuff like that right but if you can look at it like an external arm is still a part of your team and you worked out the dynamics then what are you hiring you are hiring engine power you don't need to buy that engine for yourself right it's like cloud so that's another way how i would like to look at hiring so when you say hire not hire full time hire part time that's also hiring so that's what i would kind of look at it and and basically in short if i had to summarize hiring is a long term relationship thing it is not a reactive game it has to be a proactive game mm-hmm. so raja what is what is what is your thought around uh, hiring okay and and thinking upon what uh, kumaran just mentioned sure i take this into uh, different because the hiring process for uh, the service companies like the big uh, the boom that uh, happened in india right uh, so the big service companies is different from what the product companies are uh, looking for and the startups let's take this three uh, as an important players in this right Uh, as far as the service company is concerned it's completely based on the demand right so they hire they train at least 6 months they keep some skills uh, you know like the basic skills and then try to put them into the project make make them billable right the product companies is all about Uh, the next feature they have to launch whether they have a right people in it how to hire that people right startup companies it's it's absolutely like uh, the the uh, you know the funding and the investment how much we have we get the best resource in the world as quickly as possible in their team right this are the two three different perspectives okay but what is currently happening right now it's kind of a flux right there are two changes that is happening in india specifically the hiring processes in india right because the startup ecosystem is growing which means that the top layer uh, i mean the geeks layer or the layer which ne- uh, which are so good right they are they are they are getting hired by the startups by paying so much of money because of their uh, investments ca- uh, you know they are getting right so which means that the service companies and the product companies which are having these people before or losing those people because they're moving towards the startups okay by paying heavy hefty money but uh, if you look at the, even in the product companies or in the service companies only 10% of the people are really geeks the remaining person will support the whole ecosystem to run properly but the the purpose of the engine is that 10% mm-hmm. but that 10% is coming to startups right now right uh, and because of the money game that is involved there and that is where the struggle happens right now uh, for service companies as well as the product companies that's the first struggle 
the second important struggle is actually the technology changes right so in in case of a big comp- uh, you know the service companies they used to take 6 months to train someone and then make them billable right now if those skills are gone right and every 6 months html5 you can't imagine how much of the frameworks that is getting released within 2 months 3 months time frame right which means that they cannot get the training done uh so w- what is happening is they don't know how to handle the situation but there the but there is a lot of demand and there is a f- skill gap so they are trying to bridge that gap with a usual approach what they used to do of training like hire more freshers train them with the new skills and try to deploy they are trying to apply the same thing what they have done for years for the new problem okay that's the second problem i see i i'm not sure whether that can solve it as well but that's the second problem from an enterprise perspective that i see right the third thing from a workforce perspective right the future of workforce is uh, the predictability uh, as kumar and said right that is becoming like uh, a, a holy grail right the, the prediction is becoming like a holy grail we are not able to predict anything literally right uh, one small product somewhere in the world just changes the whole ecosystem uh, specifically on one particular transaction uh, you know uh, so so looking for that uh, from from a from a future of workforce perspective definitely it's going to be skill based on specific instances okay and then whether that skill is available across the world not necessarily within the geographic location but across the world right and they are able to hire with a hefty money and get them get the job done so which means that the freelancing with the with the greater skills will have a bright future that's the future of workforce i see okay great thanks uh venkat from the from your yeah. startup perspective i know uh, raja gave us a good big picture of where things are so give us your perspective of where the things are uh, what do you see uh, as the way it is going forward yeah so as as raja mentioned um, uh, we are uh, right now we are looking for the uh, the global uh, the talents but right now so uh, uh, one point i just want to differ from the raj sir so you said the other startup companies have a ton of money they can no i i am a big teller but that is for uh, after series a before series a no uh, we don't have a ton of money we cannot uh, spend a lot of money on a uh, the good technical uh, uh, hiring so uh, thanks for the uh, this uh, couple of companies they are already paying a ton of money to the um, all the talent um, not only top notch for the medium talent people also they are also getting um, good money and uh, it is very difficult for uh, uh, the startup companies to pull them back to the um, startup ecosystem because they are very comfortable with the uh, the corporate uh, the luxuries so that's where um, we are uh, facing uh, some hiring uh, that tell us in our startup company because uh, our also startup company with a with a uh, uh, little um, a technical uh, team though we are a technical startup we are a um, our founder company we are still uh, uh, no uh, f- facing some issues to get the uh, the talent because they are Yeah, I'll just differentiate. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, Venkat. I just differentiate yes. the startups, right? Let's call yeah. it as unicorns and and startups, <laughs> right? Okay. Okay. So okay. now we have almost fifteen unicorns in India in last two years. And then you so, have the startups with the begging bowls. They are two different begging bowls. Things. <laughs> yeah, two different things. <laughs> okay. Yeah, not all startups are big pockets. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so yeah so on uh, our plan right now is as um, the kumran said uh, we are trying to outsource um, as well uh, like uh, wherever it is possible um, and for our uh, core strength uh, core products you know we will uh, we'll have a separate uh, team to monitor um, that's how right now we are managing it I, i think that that looks like from what kumran and uh, you have just mentioned and uh, raja also mentioned is that this gig based and this uh, outsourcing and the contracting sort of uh, approach is is becoming more and more popular because hiring and keeping expensive talent on your roles is is becoming increasingly difficult so nishan what is what are you seeing from your perspective in in a 
from a enterprise services organization where do you see this is going how this is impacting your organization yeah uh, mainly I, I would like to say from a product company perspective the first thing that uh, the main, one of the main point that kumar highlighted is like especially in a product company we should definitely have that bcp and dr plan in place because that is an important thing uh, we, we we should try our best to retain a resource because they are actually they have, when, when they leave or when they are actually leaving a product or a company actually they are living with their knowledge their, their knowledge uh, especially the domain or the business knowledge that they gain throughout the year so uh, the first thing the company should take an action is like they should have a clear and proper mechanism on a resource dr as well as the bcp plan and when it comes to the hiring part the, uh, my point is like when we should when 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 we are um, planning to hire a person the first and foremost theory actually or the thumb rule is like especially from an interviewer point of view the, it's like that person should be smarter than you the first thing like when we interview some someone the main the main thing we should ensure that is like whether that person is smarter than you and the interviewer uh, and uh, the smartness of the interviewer also is a matter if the interviewer is is not that much yeah. the expectation that we are setting then again it's a problem but that is the company choice the who all should be there in the interview panel once that is decided that should be the advice that we can give the interviewer like the person who is who, that we are going to interview should be smarter than you that is the theory that we should follow in the interview process and from an and and from from other aspects in the hiring is like uh, it's always it's again it's a give and take thing like when we hire a person and we should be clear that the offers the offering that we or that we can give to them in terms of the remuneration in terms of the work or in terms of the environment that we can offer we should be confident on that the interviewer also should be or the person who is should have a clear understanding on where this person is going to work what what would be the what would be the environment what would be the technology stack there which means that nowadays what happens is like we, uh, we are doing the interview also giving at an outsourcing kind of task because there will be so many recruiters they will recruit us for us and they will assign the person there finally what happens is like the expectation that the recruiter uh, that he has given to the inter uh, that interview candidate or the expectation from the interview candidate is uh, would be like a day and night when he come when he joins this product or the, uh, joins the product like he, he had some set of expectation in his, in his mind uh, when uh, when he when he go into the interview process and all but finally when he joined the product or into the when get into the ecosystem he realized that this that is not the expectation there the mm -hmm. problem right uh, and uh, again the problem start raising like uh, he would show a different attitude his attitude because now uh, from that point onwards he is actually trying to looking for another job but the finally the, the loss is like uh, from only from the from the company point of because they are invested a lot for the recruitment uh, the interview time everything is precious so we should the the company or when we when we plan to hire something i think that is a very very key focus all company especially the product company should give that that should be run as a separate project like he, uh, we should have a clear script on that this would be our plan this is our expectation and this all are the background and when he joins this product this will be his product for at least for the next 5 years and next 5 years this would be our expectation whether he can meet that expectation and we should uh, prepare a script and interview uh, questions also should be prepared accordingly uh, be aligned to the script and make sure that we are meeting all these expectations otherwise this process will be keep on uh, trying different different people and finally nothing add to the product or nothing happening in the yeah so so i think dishant you made a good point from from uh, from an enterprise perspective uh, however there's a there's a catch to that is very few enterprises are able to predict what is going to happen in five years and especially in the technology space so so some of what you are asking them to do is incredibly difficult right and, and that's why you keep seeing these cycles of boom and bust and hiring and firing and uh, all those things so what are the things which i i actually 
realized when I was trying to help one of uh, our, uh, our startups hire a CTO. They were looking for a CTO and uh, I was trying to sort of suggest names of people and recommend and I was trying to look at that. So CTO obviously is a, is a unique position. It's not like hiring a fresher or anything. Right? So what I realized is startups actually ha have an uh, advantage as well as a disadvantage. Disadvantage is what, uh, what uh, Venkat just mentioned, right? So you, you may not be in a position to offer that kind of uh, money which then establish organization which has a big contract lined up and money is starting to flow. They, will, they might offer, right? So what is it that the startups can do to actually attract talent, right? So that is what you should, what I realized is if you are doing something which you can make other people believe that this is impo too important and this is going to be the best use of your skills, I have seen people are willing to make a sacrifice as says, okay, I don't need really deep, don't need that much amount of money. I just need enough so that you, I understand that you value me. You don't need to meet the, the high standards, but you need to get me that bragging rights of being having work for a startup, uh, being able to produce that technology, which is going to create that impact, right? So you have to look for those candidates where, where they are looking for that because they themselves may not have the risk ownership where they want to own a business, right? But they have the risk which they can take for themselves, right? This is okay. I can take a risk for two years working for a startup uh, and uh, honing my skills on something which I really want to make impact on. And maybe it take, take, I don't know how much percentage cut in uh, what is available in the corporate world. So that I think may be something which I realized is a possibility for startups to attract talent, right? Looking for people to believe in your cause, right? So all startups yeah. have to have that uh, uh, that cause uh, behind it, right? So that you're doing it for a cause. If you're doing a run of the mill startup, which is like, I want to just create some piece of technology and sell it to X, Y, Z, and then, then you may not, then you have to spend money. There, there is no uh, <laughs> escape from that. So what do you think, Kumaran, any, uh, before we... I I, I think that's a good point. I think that's an advantage which startups have, which enterprises don't have. And they, I think they should take full advantage of that. It is like we, in Microsoft, we had a famous adage, right? I think uh, uh, Nishant kind of also told that uh, recruit for potential, right? Or recruit somebody better than you kind of a thing, right? So you recruit for potential, not what they are doing, but you can see that they can become something bigger. Similarly, we should be able to say, you join us because you can be something better later. It is not of what salary you're going to get at the end of the month. No. Five years later, you will be in a better place. So that is, I think that would be the best way to recruit uh, something. Like, for example, I would say, uh, like, let's take Venkat, right? They are in a farming shrimp farmer's business, right? So probably the pitch will be, you know, how would you want to make a life uh, difference in the life to a farmer? And you might wonder with Java code, how can I make? I have an answer for you. My company is the place for you. The interview should go like that. Probably begin like that and then you go into technology. So I think that's an advantage which startups would have. Right or niche players will have, which enterprises might find it difficult to make. I think I completely agree with you. Raja, any any comments uh, around this 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 concept? Oh yeah. So the the last discussion is basically on the startups, right, and the uh, uh, startup hiring, right. Uh, so definitely uh, the cause the cause of the purpose, right. So the purpose is the key for them. You know? Uh, it's no second thought on that. That has to be the pitch. Uh, that's purpose is the, definitely the pitch that has to go in. Uh, but I think, uh, for example, in Silicon Valley, right, uh, for for the startups, uh, without just an idea, we can get money. In case of India, that that is a struggle. The small startups are struggling in that. But once they cross into some level, they have money. It's not like they don't have money. That's what I just want to figure it out. So there are two different cases in startups. There's a different variations in startups. From the unicorns uh, till the different stages, I mean, the angel funding, uh, venture capital funding. And then... 
uh, on the self funding right so most of the self uh, funding companies are facing this problem but the angel funding and the vc funding are quite good enough to hire with a good money with the purpose purpose is across all the startups actually with money and unicorns is going going in full swing actually because and the unicorns are really really uh, you know the number of unicorns are really growing in india which means that this is going to topple the better talents are definitely is going to be hired by them right. hmm. so, so uh, venkat do you think uh, you could apply this in 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 the startup yeah definitely definitely and and we are doing okay so so yeah so far uh, we have uh, i had the vp level uh, candidates and we have offered them shares instead of salaries we could not offer them so we are offer them a shares and we we told them no in in a five year you could be in in the in this position so so that they they are also very interested and uh, willing to start at the uh, startup company so so we are also picking up the, those kind of candidates who are you know um who, who are uh, who, who are understand our business who can believe us and uh, they can also grow along with the company okay great so so thank you everyone uh, i think this was a good discussion and people who are looking to get hired or who are going to hire uh, in startups and enterprises we have given you uh, a wide spectrum of uh, views on what is possible uh, and what is happening with industry uh, so freshers also have an, as much opportunity as experienced people uh, there is opportunities there to learn and to grow with startups to or even experienced people who want to uh, exploit their uh, talent right and then make an impact in in special uh, kinds of businesses right unique businesses where they can actually use their talent so i think you should uh, listen to this conversation and recommend it to other people who are uh, thinking about hiring and uh, this is the industry perspective and all of us have been in the industry long enough to uh see all these boom and bust cycles uh so this is hopefully the start of a boom cycle we are seeing a lot of hiring uh so make the wise decision hire the right people uh obviously uh give them good money value for for their uh, talents right and uh, either either you give them actual money or you give them stakes in your business that's that's up to you and sometimes you are just giving them knowledge which they may, they may become uh, better potential so thank you everyone for listening in and uh, see you next time